नेक्स्ट फोर्सिबल फ्यूचर फॉर अस इज टेस्ट 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 आई हैव ओसीडी अबाउट टेस्टिंग द वन थिंग दैट आल्सो डिफरेंशिएट्स इज द मॉड्यूलर बैटरी पैक्स दैट यू हैव कम अप विद यू हैव इन वन ऑफ योर इंटरव्यूज हैव Yes. I heard you talk about it where the buyer will have an option of one to six battery packs in different ranges. So, um, other than uh, that, the core technology. Uh, I mean, can I ask you what chemistry you're using? If if that's yeah, no. So the, no, no surprise there. So we are not married to a chemistry yet. Yeah. We are uh, okay. not testing NCA, NCM, uh, LDO, okay. whatever is available because the battery technology we keep on changing. Uh, we're right. not married to NMC or NCA today, even though that's what we're testing out right now. But because by the time we launch, the chemistry will change and something new will come. But what is consistent among all the batteries is that the cooling has to be really, really good. If I can keep the battery at around 22 to 28 degrees Celsius for the rest of the lives, we can promise 10 years of battery life. So that's where our uh, full focus is on, and uh, the chemistry can uh, uh, chemistry changes. Yeah. Changing. and for the cooling uh, are we using uh, phase change or liquid cooling yeah we are we are using liquid cooling uh, in our case okay. the battery is submerged inside liquid and uh, we okay. take that liquid out and then cool the battery packs back so uh, our strategy is that uh, there's something on on the air front that we have not shared there's a very little mention mm-hmm. of that in the media on the website as well but uh, somehow our trucks can predict the requirement of the heavy power coming in uh that means okay. our batteries are going to be drained faster uh, especially mm-hmm. for example we are, when we are going to charge also they are going to be charged faster also so we can predict these kind of instances and actually cool the battery actively mm-hmm. and then charge or discharge them faster so that allows us to keep the efficiency of the overall model very high okay so uh, you just spoke about charging wow, how fast can we really charge the battery pack sustainably without really degrading their life Yeah. So uh, uh, last month there's a study which came out on Tesla vehicles. Uh, they uh, got data for twenty thousand Tesla vehicles. Ten thousand were always charged on fast charging network, and ten thousand were never charged. Okay. And mm-hmm. what they saw is after seven eight years of performance, both the uh, battery packs lost six to seven percent of the life, which was mm-hmm. surprising uh, to some because if you take other vehicles, that's not what you get. um but the way tesla is different is that they have uh, managed the cooling so well that uh, fast charging doesn't affect the life so the same goes for other battery packs also so if we are able to handle the cooling part really well then the life will not get degraded even if they are charged uh, using a fast charging network and now there's a scientific data also to prove the same it really goes back how cool uh, we are but tesla has their own uh, lithium ion cell manufacturing at the moment right, right. correct and uh, are we also too dependent on you know importing cells at the moment and there are no cell manufacturers as well so there are a lot coming up uh, there is a startup uh, i'm not sure you've heard of them it's called godi they are already uh, in samples but by the time we hit 2025 26 we have excite amaraja tata reliance and ola a lot a lot many companies coming in so i'm really hoping that we make use of uh, our uh, ladakh find or we we might remember we found some uh, lithium there uh if we can yes. just add then i think uh, india is cool we will we can start shipping out trucks from india to outside where the batch is also made here uh what do you think about uh, moving from lithium to another um element because apparently lithium is very hard to find all over the world and we don't have enough lithium reserves all over the world to really fill up the uh requirement for electric vehicles so what do you think about moving on to something like uh, sodium or like a lot of a uh, solid state batteries a lot going on what yeah. do you think about that yeah so uh, statistically i'm not sure if that's the mm-hmm. the fact is correct uh, there may be enough lithium but uh, having said that it's definitely not safe for environment so sodium uh, does seem like one of the good strategy to go ahead there are a lot of research papers that have come out uh, i'm also following some patents very carefully uh, there are patents filed by a few indian companies also on the sodium batteries uh the stats look really good and i think uh, we are a couple of years away for commercialization there are few startups in us which have already started selling uh, their sodium batteries but today the power density is not there so it's a question of power density because they definitely right. are cheaper once they start matching or even they are let's say even 20% worse than lithium i think the market will start for the sodium ones or other technologies because uh 
Uh, they're, they're much safer, much, much safer. They don't catch fire as lithium does. Hmm. So uh, I saw one of these, um, uh, some a podcast with Elon Musk recently, and he uh, talks about how design in comparison is much easier than manufacturing. And uh, he calls manufacturing hell. Yes. And he says significantly more difficult uh, getting the economies of scale, getting the quality right. So what is Tessa doing to, you know, get to scale, right? Because that's really important for the market to really adopt at the right price. Yeah. So uh, there's something uh, and uh, it's, it's coming from my own experience of how I built products early on in my life. And it's also coming from uh, my uh uh, you can say thinking philosophy, which is that we have to make as many products as possible before even we start making the products you know, on the factory. So uh, literally the uh, product that you saw, which we call V01, was the seventh mm. product that we made in-house. By now we have made around 10 different products. And these are evolution of every time we make it. And every time we are seeing that, how could we have made this particular component simpler for the assembly? Because the engineers who are designing it is also making the product right now. So our engineers are, that's why we don't have any manager at dress up. Uh, the philosophy is very simple. If you're designing it, you have to go to Pina in our case or somewhere in uh, Bangalore. You have to get it manufactured and come back. And they see the pain it takes to get a product machined or manufactured. So our philosophy right now is that how do we target a particular assembly time, even right now, even though we know we are uh, quite a bit away from actual production. But when we're designing a battery pack, when we are assembling a motor, when we are when we are thinking of outsourcing let's say, the core material of motor to some, uh, some uh, particular person, we're asking a question, how do we make 100 of these in a single day? So those are the questions that are helping us uh, design the product in a way where it can be scaled up. And that exercise uh, is not there. Uh, if it's, if this exercise is not there, then it is a, a hell on the road. And uh, not saying that Tesla didn't do it, uh, but they pushed the envelope so hard that they're also doing a lot of things only for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and Tesla, I mean, for some reason, they, they have uh, chosen the route of manufacturing everything in-house. Uh, would uh, Tressa also look at that or look at contract manufacturing or a joint venture with a bigger company? Because a lot of these uh, big companies in India are also looking at electric trucks and um, putting a lot of mon money into it. So would you be looking at a partnership or contract manufacturing or, you know, do you want to stay independent? So uh, what we feel, uh, what they are doing is they're simplifying the design. And that simplification requires them to make something in-house, that's when they go ahead with, uh, for example, the Octoval, if you, if you have heard about that. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that they're making in-house because they're not able to find a vendor. And Tesla probably exists to just push the envelope so hard that they're so far ahead of other people that they can't catch. And that's a struggle we're also finding. For instance, that I'm not able to find uh, Indian suppliers for a lot of components. So in that case, should we go ahead or invent those or make them here, or we decide that we have to stick to the old uh, old technology. So that's a call that we also have to make. But I'd rather have a one particular company working with us and delivering us the components that we need than designing thousands of components because each component in itself is a company. So, right. uh, and the ecosystem has to grow up because otherwise uh, uh, there's too many challenges to solve. Uh, what is the one big obstacle in the EV space right now in terms of technology? What do you think like, okay, maybe the battery packs are holding us back or the manufacturing finesse is holding us back. In India, the startup space, what is really our biggest obstacle? Yeah, there are two actually. One is the lack mm -hmm. of uh, uh, modern electronic and electrical components which are required for EV industry. And second is expertise of engineers who have worked on these kind of products. Mm -hmm. we, we have so, we have so, uh, so much focused on, for example, China is doing electric vehicles since uh, Tesla is doing it. And if you think about uh, their ecosystem is way more advanced and capable compared to the kind of vendors that we have. We are, fo we are still focusing on uh, most of the diesel and petrol vehicles. We have moved out from diesel now to petrol. So we are slightly slower there. And uh, that's where there's a biggest, bigger problem. And in case of uh, electric vehicles, certainly we have to think about a lot more safety and concern and stuff. And these components for the luxurious market, which are not supposed to be available, certainly we are realizing, okay, they were not made in India. They were still being imported from uh, outside the country. So that ecosystem is something which uh, needs to also scale up. But that is what is halting us right now. What do you feel about um, startups like Tressa tying up with um, Indian institutes and uh, you know working with the students
from you know maybe their first year in engineering and giving them projects so that they learn what the ev technology and progression is all about so that once they graduate then a lot more equipped with skills to you know really add value to the company once they join um yeah so because, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. probably uh, in my career i would have had more more than 300 interns till now i love working with them uh, but when it comes to institutes uh, i'm slightly scared because of the overall red tape that uh, is in my head probably it's not there now i've heard so many good things about especially it madras which keeps uh, nursing out these ev startups but we we'll love we we'll definitely love to work but i think we need to be at a scale where we can tell these students that this is the, what we want you to solve uh in general yeah. internships you can join a company and then you're clueless on what to do and then you figure out some small project that you want to work on but what i want especially for the indian students to have a hands on experience like how to design a motor what does it take uh, uh in my college at karakpur we had uh, i think india's best cnc machine i never got to use it or touch it it was always down or it was for the master student and that, that's not what i want for the students so uh, probably I will start a course one day where uh, Madras has a good course already, but a much more physical course where students can weld, they can uh, cut, they can uh, do laser cutting and all the stuff and actually build stuff. So coming back to you as a startup founder, okay. So all of us have heard that starting up a company and this whole journey is quite difficult. It's quite challenging and uh, requires a lot of commitment. uh talk to us about that what what have been the big obstacles and uh, how you have overcome them and just talk to us about your journey what it took to you for you to get to this point uh so for me it was uh, i'll say lucky i have a wonderful wife who keeps my head calm i have amazing people to work at and my job has been extremely simple since beginning find people who are better than me and then make sure that they remain like that so uh uh if i am able to create freedom for my engineers and people i work with that they are allowed to uh, this small incident which happened yesterday uh 6 months ago we were testing, testing one of our motor in bond and uh, we were really really happy we were celebrating it and yesterday when they were at lab i was pushing them to burn the motor because when we burn the motor we know exactly what the limit is and they were not able to burn the motor that is also a really really happy incident and that's how we are doing uh, working internally so pressure is really how much you make out of it uh do i get in pressure mm-hmm. yeah once in a while and uh, i'll close myself in a room think for an hour but immediately i have to come out uh because next day is a new problem and new day but once you have really good people around good friends and amazing wife then everything becomes easier awesome it's great that you crediting your wife so this uh, that's great so what what is uh, tessa's present and uh um next 5 years looking like where are we right now and where are we trying to be yes so uh next uh foreseeable future for us is test 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 i have ocd about testing uh i i'm not sure you know or not the first product with, which we launched at notion inc my first company came out with a 5 year warranty on electronics and full product we had zero service centers and the warranty was that anything goes bad with your product we are going to ship you a new one and we did that for 80 plus countries so it's sort of like ingrained that a product cannot fail the moment it goes outside of tessa that's why we are just testing it uh if you happen to come to uh, tessa we'll show you the test equipment we have built along with the truck because we have to i don't have permission today to take on the roads and enter the city so we are building equipment to test the motor to test the whole vehicle out so next one year it's just test with us internally with the partners uh, uh we are going to talk about that more in february march uh we are probably conducting world's largest trials on the ground with our partners and ourselves also and uh it's just test we want to make sure that we are uh at least slightly happy before the truck goes out that it will not fail under and uh, uh you probably might know indian trucks are not uh loaded 200% they're loaded to 200 150% yeah so we have to make sure that it does really good there what are what are the products currently existing in the market that you have a lot of respect for as an engineer as a designer as a startup founder uh india or overall the world both both maybe maybe one or two in india and one or two worldwide okay uh if i will think uh, uh tesla is def- definitely comes uh top of the mm-hmm. mind apple also does uh does come top of the mind but then you also have uh, uh our uh, uh isro 
anything they make, I just fall in love with that because of the frugality and the ingeniousness that they keep doing. I mean, you might have seen Mangalyan and other movies also. That's mm. literally a very, very different thought process that goes inside. So uh, if uh, for design, definitely uh, there's Apple, which always comes on top of the mind. Uh, then you also have Sony. For a particular product, if I want to pinpoint on one particular product that I love, that's iPhone 8, which was the last metal phone that they made. I, I don't like glass phones after that. It's not practical. But uh, uh, And if we talk about India, then we have Zerodha and Zoho. Both of them, I, I, just, I just love the way uh, they're working and nudging, nudging things out. Hmm. So um, just to get to the end of our conversation, what what is the final few words that you'd like to tell our viewers why why should our viewers really look forward to being updated about what Tressa is doing and you know just look forward to what's coming next yeah so uh, uh Tressa is really you what we are doing right now is uh, going to represent us and that's why uh, we are putting our heart out. I'm in office at 5.30, 6 a.m. I leave as late as possible. Again, possible because of my wife, I have to say that. But, uh, uh, and the whole team is here. Uh, we have a five-day work culture, but team is here on Saturday, Sunday, making sure that when we represent our country outside India, we all are proud. You can go out and, prob and probably say that this is one product. Uh, if you see my examples also from India, there's, they were not hardware product. I want us to finally be able to say that this is one hardware product we are really proud of. And that, that's why I think you should care and help and uh, critique, make sure that we design the best and uh, there is no one else who can compete. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. I would like to, you know, urge our viewers to, you know, visit, visit your website and go through uh, all the content that you're making as well. I, I find the videos that you put up also quite interesting with the music and technology coming together. It's quite, quite impressive. And looking forward to Tessa, uh, seeing Tessa on the road soon enough. And uh, all the very best, um, proud of Tessa. And thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your time, sir. Thanks, thanks, Harpik. It was wonderful talking yeah. to you.